Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video I will show you how to create a composite in Photoshop using a render from Blender. So we got this um, two drawn images here, one is uh, the uh, back view, one is the front view and you can see that they're kind of like uh, overlaid over a city view and the city is blurred and I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop. So what you need is a cutout of an image first, all right? So when you're gonna be rendering your drone in, oh, look at that, there's some kind of a shading problem here. Need to fix that. When you're gonna be rendering your image in Blender, what you wanna do is you want to cut out the background, which means you wanna render it without any background. So in here under render settings, you wanna go to film and turn on this transparent so the HDRI image is not visible. You got transparent background. And when you finish rendering this image, okay, what you wanna do is you wanna save it as um, RGB, RGB alpha, which means you need to preserve the alpha channel of your render in order to, um, you know, in order to have a cutout so you can bring it to Photoshop. And I would highly recommend you're gonna be rendering this as TIFF um, so it's gonna be um, you know high quality so when you when you finish rendering your image and, and you're gonna be saving this to your computer make sure you're gonna save it as TIFF okay so here click on save as and in this section here you want to choose TIFF and RGBA without it this background is not going to be transparent all right 16 bit because the quality is gonna be a bit better and also select none here no compression and save it and once you do that, uh, you can bring your image to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, when you drop it in, you're gonna have a beautiful cutout of your model. Now, in order to mix it with a background, you need to find background that actually fits your model. So what you need to do, let's fix this problem here first, right? I'll show you how to fix this. This is actually um, caused by Bevel because this part here on the top was subdivided. And in fact, I probably could fix it in, in here as well. Let me just collapse this for a second go here to um, regular view and let's just grab this piece to local and I'm guessing the the bevel is causing this somewhere here yeah there you go it's probably um, the cutter let me just apply the cutter so um, just multiply and there you go that's what's causing it okay so GG just move it in here a little bit and boom sort it so anyway, um, when you're going to be looking for an image for this model, you need to look for something that more or less fits in terms of lighting. It is really important, okay? Uh, so you can see that the lighting here is very flat. We are using uh, the abandoned slip away from polyheaven.com. So if you go to polyheaven.com and um, go to uh, go to HDRIs, and here in search, we're going to type abandoned, abandoned slip away. This one. This is an HDR I'm using in 95% of images uh, that I create because of the beautiful flat lighting. So you kind of have to match it more or less, okay? But we can, you know, fix it in Photoshop. So what you want to do is you want to go to uh, Google and you want to um, Google either on, on Splash or Pexel on any website that give you free stock images and just type city and splash and one of these is gonna fit and i chose this one which is shanghai it's really cool because look at the look at the lighting it's very diffused right so it kind of fits and we're gonna just match the colors so click here and download the biggest um, image you can find so you know the uh, the large size of it and once you do you can drop it to photoshop right so just drag and drop it in here okay Boom. And we're going to scale this up, so move it underneath your model, and we're going to scale it up um, to make this bigger. So hold Alt, and you can scale it up from the from the center and drop it somewhere here. It's actually too big, uh, and we're gonna scale it down. So we're gonna kind of squash it. So hold Shift, and you can squash it down like this. Okay, and position it somewhere here. Now we got some uh, piece of a reflector here when I was rendering leftover so we can just grab this marquee tool select it and press delete to remove it okay so now we have this and um there is some kind of a reflection here in the corner let's just move this image a bit to the right so just move it a bit here there we go that's cool and you can see that uh, there's um, a really bright background here in the front which is cool and, and kind of bright background on the back 
But we need something on the top as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, press Ctrl J. So let's just uh, click here and Ctrl J, and then we go into Ctrl T, and I'm going to hold Shift and rotate it, you know, 180 and move it to the top. Uh, maybe like this, right? And I'm going to um, click and drop a mask here. And grab this uh, gradient tool, black background, and we're going to, you know, run the gradient here. Okay, so we want to mix them together, uh, these two images, right? And create something like this. And you can, you know, you can move them closer. So you could move this up a little bit, like that. And you could move this one down. So click here on this chain to unlink the mask from the uh, from the image. And I can move the image without the mask, so you can drop it down a little bit like this to create a narrower gap. It's going to be more dramatic. So now what we need to do, we need to remove the destructions. And one of the destructions is here, this gap here, see between the buildings. And it's a really nasty, nasty pool because uh, it's going to be contrasting. I need to want that. So it's a bottom image, but we cannot really fix it before we um, remove this um, effect on the image, which is basically called the smart object. You see like a small icon here. This means that uh, this image is a smart object, which means you can resize it many times in Photoshop without losing quality. And here, what you want to do is you want to rasterize that to remove this effect. And then we can grab marquee tool, select this bit here. Okay. And we're going to actually make it smaller uh, like this. And we're going to go here to edit and cont uh, content to our fill to fix that. Make sure in auto and click OK, all right, boom, gone. Now it looks a bit better here. So we have uh, we have fixed this, and now we have to do the same thing on the top. So click here, right-click, rasterize layer, and um, select that, and edit, and content over fill, and apply, okay, cool. Other than that, I think we're good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all these layers and we're going to uh, merge visible, sorry, merge layers. So we're gonna merge them into one. So now this is one image. And we're going to introduce some uh, blurring, okay? So we're gonna go to blur and motion blur. And we're going to blur it um, horizontally as if this drone was moving, you know, in, into one direction. So just simply, you know, select a value here and blur it a little bit. Don't overdo it um, because, you know, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, you want to blur it just a little bit and OK. Cool. Now we need to move this drone a bit in the frame because uh, it's kind of center. I want to offset it a little bit to the right. So the um, space here on the, on the right side at the back is smaller than on the front. So it's going to amplify this kind of illusion of it moving forward. Maybe that's a little bit too, too deep, maybe somewhere here. Um, and it's cool. And now what we need to do, we need to match the brightness and um, um, and darkness, so contrast of the image in the background with the drone. See, the trick is to good composite is to match the shadows. It's one of the elements. And here you can see the buildings are quite uh, pale in terms of shadows in comparison to, to the shadows on the drone. So what we're going to do, we're going to add some curves here. And we're going to grab this handle and actually switch this layer to uh, luminosity so it will affect only darkness and brightness of the image. Click on the building and drag it down, okay? So it's gonna get, you know, darker, okay? And the, this one, we're gonna drag it up a little bit. Increase the contrast of uh, of this image, okay? Just a little bit, boom, that's, that looks much more, much more interesting. Now, if you can do, uh, what you could do is uh, kind of cast the color of this, of this build, of, of this um, cityscape onto the drone so we could select the empty layer and go to brush, press B, hold Alt and select the color from somewhere from here and I'll delete and then Alt and clip it to the drone and change the color. All right. And you're going to have the same color in the drone, but you know, this is a bit overdone. So we're going to sort of reduce the opacity here a little bit of fill to create kind of like a, you know, a slight color cast on this drone. There we go. This drone is a bit too dark, so are we going to control J that and go to filter and camera row. And we're going to increase slightly the, uh, uh, the exposure. Okay. And we're going to increase the shadows to open it up a little bit and increase the clarity a bit. Shadows a bit more. We can also move the blacks up a little bit. 
and drop the highlights just a little bit okay to maybe minus three that's cool let's see how it looks yeah that's a little bit better maybe it's a bit too bright so let's double click that here and let's remove this from the brighter stones a little bit hold alt to split this we can remove this from the uh, brighter stones how oh, this should do i think all right so it's quite well matched at the moment it's not super you know it's not perfect but it's not bad you could actually darken it down a little bit more there you go and um now i know what i would do I would just simply start using filters um so i'll be using something like for example infinite color which is a paid filter and i recommend you get it it's fantastic you can basically run any um, sort of a color filter you want on your image um this looks pretty cool this looks pretty cool this drone is still a little bit too dark in here let me just darken this a bit more we could darken it down and actually brighten up the top so do something like this all right so the, the bottom is darker and uh, then the than the top what we could do now here is we could uh, we could reduce opacity of both so we could uh, drop the fill a little bit Oh, cool. So that looks a bit better. And we have some really weird stuff going on on the bottom. So let's remove that. So let's go here and let's uh, select this and shift to select this. Go to edit and content aware. And click OK. And control D. Perfect. It's better. If you guys would like to learn more about, uh, you know, camera work, lighting, compositing or composing images, post-processing, rendering, etc. We have a design course which should help you with that plus more, like for example, designing details, you know, etc. But also we have compositing for 3D artworks, which is a fantastic course and other courses like the generator course, mobile generator, which includes another part that uh, shows you how to create photorealistic renders and composites. And there's a lot of talk on camera work lighting photoshop work etc so this is super important if you really want to make your work stand out so look into these the one of our best courses on that in addition you could join our membership on our membership we have tons of different courses that help you to push your uh, camera skills your rendering skills much further and each of courses actually has its own rendering section so i will highly recommend you guys look into that plus we offer a forum private forum to all the members where you can get feedback and we are quite active on that forum so if anyone needs feedback on the work you know we provide it so check it out all the links are in the video description and uh, we can wrap it up so shift ctrl alt and e and then let's go here and i'm going to use nick software to bring it together so i'm going to go to color effects pro and we're going to play with pro contrast here so let's just reset that and uh, let's pull this up a little bit here. Not too much. And we're going to add cross processing. So, not a filter. And that's actually pretty cool. Um, I like the color. But we could make it a bit more bluish, you know, or. That one's pretty cool though. I like that one and we're gonna add some punch to it and you know some coloring cool and on top of that i'm gonna use a nitric which is not a paid add-on um so it's really good for um stuff like the uh, lighting and uh, we're gonna add the mask here to certain areas like the back and here uh, the engines and this part here the more accurate you are the better i'm not really very accurate probably best to use a pen for this and a tablet that will do then click ok here and now we can actually punch it with exposure to increase the uh, you know luminosity of these and maybe punch the threshold a bit as well maybe that's a bit too much there you go and let's just save it And boom, and this layer on top is going to give you this nice bloom. If you don't have access to an Eric, what you can do is uh, create an empty layer on top. 
and uh, you could play with color dodge so select this color here and just you know do that and then change to um, linear dodge you could do something like this but you need to be very accurate with your painting right um, you could also change it to soft light which will also give a little bit of a punch so there are other ways of you know creating glow in photoshop but onyric is just simply superb and if you're into compositing um, i highly recommend you get that in addition to that you could add some lights in the, into the city but remember that you need to blur them as well otherwise it's not gonna you know look realistic or you could run on the on your on, on the city as well so we could run another on the layer here on the city so and we could simply mask the bottom of the city so mask it and make it bigger and mask the bottom and the top and then increase the threshold and exposure yeah it's a little bit too much and you can see that certain areas gonna start glowing but it's better to manually add lights and then use a new on top of that it's gonna be a bit more defined and the last stage will be adding adding some text and let's just fix that with clone stem tool so let's go to clone stem tool and uh, fix this one and and fix this one here there we go no one can see what happened there is some nasty i don't know what it is some kind of oh some kind of a pool here as well let me just drop the strength of it there we go i also don't like this one actually this one's gonna be easier to fix with uh, content aware this content aware algorithm is superb so you guys should try it out boom and it's gonna remove this pull from here yeah and there you go you could actually add glow to these areas here so we could uh, sample a color from you know from somewhere here and sort of add glow here like this and change it to soft light it's gonna add a little bit of glow uh, you know behind the drone um, like that maybe it's too strong so drop it down a bit like this there you go and then add some text here on the top and the bottom and you're good to go so there you go guys that's how you create a very simple composite um, using your renders you're gonna have some really cool fun just remember that you need to match the colors and shadows it's really important and also more or less the perspective the perspective here is actually um kind of pushed to the max because the city was shot i assume with like about 50 millimeter lens whereas the drone was shot with 85 so the focal length doesn't really match but it's difficult to see that because the drone is actually angled so that kind of rescues this and uh, because it was shot from the side the drone goes into the image so the perspective kind of helps here but if i shot this with 50 mil probably would be better but you know now the only thing that i uh i would change in this image uh, maybe remove this uh this here this kind of like a disc which sort of sticks to the wing and it really annoys me and i actually might do that um these little things you want you want to you know you want to remove because they're going to be irritating Control click on the drone to select it shift ctrl i to invert selection and now what you can do you can just basically paint um here without encroaching on the drone and uh, we could actually paint this one here like this uh something like that and i think this is going to look a little bit better so ctrl d look at that you see what i mean it just uh, looks a bit cleaner so when you compositing image always think about you know about weight of elements in terms of darkness and brightness there's uh, the contrast creates weight in your image and you need to distribute that weight evenly across the image to make it look believable all right guys well that's it for this one thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one